Hi guys, welcome back to Educate Channel. This is the second part of the Staphylococcus video. So if if at all you haven't seen my video on the part one on Staphylococcus, go to part one Staphylococcus. I will be giving the link in the description box. So we are moving to the second part of the video that is toxins of Staphylococcus. The first the cell are associated virulent factors. They are actually it consists of the capsule picoic acid which have antiphagocytic ability that is picoic acid has antiphagocytic ability the protein a in the protein a is a very important cell wall associated virulent factor it is actually a b cell mitogen it causes platelet damage and hypersensitivity the protein a is present in which bacteria this is a question used in mock examinations so and the f the clumping factor the bound coagulase is also important cell wall associated with the factor so moving to the exotoxins of staphylococcus aureus the first one that is hemolysin so the enzyme or the toxin which cause the breakdown of rbc so the beta hemolysin produce partial hemolysis that is actually an irony so for hemolysis and hemolytic property you can see my video on hemolysis and blood dagger and also gam test so pantone valentine leukoside it has leukocidal activity that is they can kill the leukocytes c is the antrotoxin it is heat stable heat stable antrotoxin it can produce many intestinal lesions and they can break the villi and cause food poison now the exfoliative skin or exfoliative skin toxin or also known as dermonecrotoxin that is dermis necrosis toxin or exfoliation toxin that is toxin creating exfoliation or epidermal lysis epidermolytic toxin they are producing Richter's disease or the SSSS or the greasy pig disease now the toxic shock syndrome toxin that is they will be producing toxic shock. Uh, acute death will be there now the extracellular enzymes are coagulase so they are having coagulase enzyme they will be coagulating the rbc whenever tested so hyaluronidase this is a spreading factor that is they will be breaking the hyaluronic acid in the cell membrane and they can easily move out in the body so nucleases are ribonucleases deoxyribonucleases fibrinolysin is actually an extracellular enzyme which can break the fibrin and Pave way for spreading of Staphylococcus sorry. So the extracellular enzyme continued. There will be lipases, esterases. They will be hydrolyzing the lipids and the esterases, esters. In lysozyme, they will be hydrolyzing the peptidoglycan in the cell wall of many bacteria. They will be killing other bacteria sometimes. This Staphylococcus will be killing other bacteria that may produce any negative symptoms for the Staphylococcus aureus. So urease, urease will be having collagenase, so it will be breaking the collagen and elastase, catalase enzyme, proteases, fatty acid modifying enzyme. So this is an important toxin or virulence factor that is sideropore or ion binding proteins. They are small high affinity ion weighting compounds secreted by microorganisms. And it increases the absorption of some minerals to the inside of the bacteria. That is bacterium can easily get the minerals from the intestinal flora or the flora of the cell it will be taking the extracellular ions into the lactoferrin receptor and the bacteria can use the these ions to conduct the metabolism of the bacteria now the slime produced by cs actually the slime layer that is an unorganized layer in the extracellular material which surrounds the bacterial cell. It is actually a protective layer from many surfaces. That is, if at all bacteria is found in the hard surface, they will be having many problems. So, this slime layer is a loose layer and they will be protecting the bacteria from environment. So, the protein A, the function of protein A, where, wherever the toxins are found, position of the toxins regarding the cell, it will be in this diagram this is protein a molecule to binding to the antibody and the infection see the coagulases how is the coagulases working they are producing cloth thank you